Hi guys! In today's video, I will be trying to make a complete tutorial on how to put your grip and your claws on your broadsword, either for traditional or modern wushu. Oh. Before we start, what do you need as for the material? Of course, you'll need a grip. I'm a very 2000 wushu athlete, so I'm a big fan of the towel or sponge grips uh, that were a big thing back then uh, within the Chinese athletes. Uh, I, I know some people still use them, some other people prefer the basic plastic uh, badminton or just tennis uh, racket grip but uh, I'm a big fan of this. It's not about the fact that I'm sweating a lot or not, it's just that I do like the feeling on my hand of the towel grip. If you can't find them either online or in any sports shop, then you can go for a towel, which is a good option. And I believe that Mark from former Wushuzilla and now Wushu52 made a video with Yang Yu Hong teaching how he uses that kind of very thin towel to make a grip is sold. Usually when you buy grips in any store they will also provide a kind of adhesive so that you can really fix it to your sword. But I don't really like it because it's it doesn't stick that much especially when you have got sweaty hands. So I recommend you go for a strapping grip uh, that you can buy again online or in any drugstores normally. Uh, and of course you'll need scissors and maybe for later a pair of pliers uh, with a wire cutter section and last but not least of course you will need a cloth that you can buy pretty much everywhere i guess uh, i recommend you buy more than what you need and if you're into the bicolor thing buy two different colors now that we have all the accessories and material we need the first step no matter if you're doing traditional or modern will be to start with the claws, not with the grip. Don't do the mistake, first mistake to avoid. Um, oh, a question many people ask is, what about the length of the claws? That's a good question. Uh, here today I will be using a big one, just because I'm having a performance next weekend uh, using the broadsword for traditional drunken broadsword. If you do traditional, usually it will be a long one. Long enough so that when you grab the sword by your side, the claws will be touching the ground. But if you're doing modern wushu and especially here optional forms, what you'll need is a very short claws because what you want is to stand out with speed. So usually what I recommend to my students for the optional forms is just to get a close as long as your palm. A little bit longer because you need to strap it. Let's start with the traditional method. Most broadswords when they are new they come with a little iron ring at the end, right? But they don't all do. So let's suppose it's here. If it's not, just you can go either directly through the little hole where the ring is attached or you can just use an iron wire and make it round like this. One option is just to make the cloth thinner and pass it through the ring or the hole and just to make a knot to attach it. Two hours later. Make it tight enough so that it doesn't fall. You can do two, but I don't like to do two because it's pretty ugly because it's quite big. Uh, but one is okay. Uh, it's still ugly, but okay, it's because of my clothes also that that's pretty much destroyed. So that's an option. You'll go like this, about like this for modern wushu and like that big for traditional wushu. And if you're really into the 80s golden age of wushu and like bicolor things, you can put a second one just by the first one uh, and attach it the same way. Okay, that's first option to attach the clothes. Since the first method was very easy but pretty ugly, uh, I'm going to show you two other ways to put the clothes on your broadsword. The first method is for optional taro athletes. In optional forms, the clothes is so small that it will never get stuck around your wrist when you'll be performing. So 
just attach it directly to the side of your board sod and cut it wherever it needs to be cut. To attach the cloth to the side of your broadsword for optional forms, I recommend you be using the strapping band I was talking about earlier in the video. What you want to do is to attach it to the left side of your broadsword. That's very important because if it's on the right side where your hands come and touches the broadsword the most, it might still get around your wrist. So you want to get it away from your wrist. That's a very important point. Then attach it to the broadsword. And that should look like this. Still pretty ugly, but we are not completely done. So the third and last method I'm using uh, will be for traditional. And as I said, with a very long cloth, it's easy to get it stuck around your wrist when you're doing wanhua or liao tao. So what you need here is is a, an iron wire, is a, a hanger. I don't have an iron wire on me now, so I'll be using that and you can do the same. If you're using a hanger, use a shitty one, very, very thin. We're not going to cut it here, but more to the bottom. And here, I'll cut it. <laughs> Way harder than a mapu. So what you want now is to reduce this pace and get it even on both sides. So just use your strengths. Or if you don't have any strengths, just use pliers like me. But here I'll be trying to use my fingers just to show off. Six and a half hours later. Now you should have something looking like pretty much like this. Okay? We will be putting that same on the left side of your broadsword. The same way you will attach it with the strapping band. Of course, make sure it's on the flattest side of your broadsword. So now you should have something like this, and the next step is just to attach the cloth to it. Cutting that with my scissors. And because I've been traumatized myself by losing my cloth when performing, I just add one more security by using my beloved strapping band and attach it together with the hanger and the cloth. And here we go. Still pretty ugly, right? So the next step is now to put the grip on the handle. When it comes to putting the grip on the handle, some people like to start from the top. I personally prefer to start from the bottom and here's why, because when you start from the bottom, it will look like this, right? So these, these parts, will actually go downward when you hold your sword like this. So I think it's more logical to start from the bottom just because when you grip your broadsword and you start sweating, your hand will most likely go down and not up. But if your hands go down, starting from the bottom, it won't impact your grip. It, whether if you start from the top, I feel like it will because you'll definitely Rip it to the bottom. What I want to do is to start from the bottom like this so that it gives me, it shows me the way on how to put it around my handle. Get rid of part of the adhesive protection, not to put dust on the rest of it and start putting the grip on. Try to make the grip as tight as possible to the handle So as you see, I don't have enough grip here. So thankfully, I have another one and I will just be cutting part of it and finish to put the grip on the handle using the, that little bit. Now that the grip is fully on the broadsword, I like to secure it with my favorite strapping band. Put as much as you want, as long as you're comfortable with it, but don't put too much either because through time it gets sticky. Repeat the same thing at the bottom of the handle and you're good to go. So here you go guys. Now you've got your broadsword with a nice grip. If you don't have the chance to have a teacher, you're free to use my method and to ask me any question you might have in the comments below. And I will see you next week for a new video. Bye.